はじめまして私は上江と申します29歳になりました私あの日本で5年ぐらい住んでいまして I decided to move to Japan and learn the language so I do speak Japanese My manager told me to take off my coat in the elevator <laughs> before seeing everyone How was it to build friendship? It's really hard to make deep connections Hi everyone, welcome back to Evolve. We're here today with our friend Camille, who is from France and she's been living in Asia for the past six years. She is here today to tell us a little bit about her story. Camille, would you like to tell us how has it been for you living in Asia for the past six years? I've lived five years in Japan. I was a student for one year and I was doing some part time job, but it was still very chill. So I met a lot of foreigners, I met, I met a lot of friends, and I really loved like, Japanese people. Like, so welcoming, so nice, so polite, and always ready to help. Even when you don't speak Japanese, they're gonna try to help you, they're gonna always give their best. I was a wa waitress. And I couldn't speak any Japanese. <laughs> so it was very, very tough. Working can be a challenge for people who don't really know about the, the corporate culture in Japan. So, for example, in France, when you work in a company, bosses or managers, they want a really nice, like, a non hierarchical uh, type of, you know, way of doing things. But in Japan, The hierarchy is very important. When you don't really know about this culture and you just start working there, I think at first it can be really, really tough. You know? My first full time job there, there was one rule that I didn't know about. So, you know, when you go into your company and you have a coat, if you're in a French company, you don't take off your coat before meeting everyone and before greeting everyone. Well, in Japan, there is like one rule that is obviously not in every company, but in my first company, it was the case where my manager told me that I had to take off my coat in the elevator、oh, <laughs> wow. before seeing everyone. And also, the way of greeting, because my first company was a rather big company, you have to greet all the different parts of the company. So, the sales pe people, the HR people, you have to greet everyone in the morning. And you have to greet the, we say, erai hito in Japanese, is like the you know, top person first. So, this is also something that is very, very different. And you know, even if you, when you, you know, finish your day, And you have to go before your manager, you have to go before your colleagues. You say, like, ah, shitre shimasu, shitre itashimasu. And it means, like, oh, I'm sorry for leaving before you guys. It's interesting as well. You mentioned, like, in the first year, you had a lot of friends because、yeah. the stereotype that I've heard is that it's very difficult to make friends、yeah. with Japanese people.、It、so,、is. were your friends at university, were they Japanese? Like, do you have many Japanese friends? How was it to? Build friendships with、uh, Japanese people. Yeah, I have to be honest though, I do feel like most of my friends were foreigners. I did make Japanese friends、uh, when I was a student, and they were also like students. But when I entered the corporate world, that's when, when things started getting. South, because all my friends that I studied with, they went back to their you know, countries. And in the corporate world, it's really different. Like, it, it gets really hard to make deep connections. And I do feel like the communication between a French person and a Japanese person is a bit different. I do feel like French p e r s o n are very straight to the point. I and mean, not everyone, but I do feel we have this culture of being very upfront. Whereas in, in Japan, you have the tatemai, so you have to put a mask and you have to, you know, try not to like, offend someone or try to not go. Too deep onto some subjects like politics or like, you know, some stuff that can bring debates. And for some people, it can make things hard to have deep connections with people and make friendships. Guys, if you're getting any value from this, we would really appreciate if you could subscribe and hit the like button. But it's definitely possible to make Japanese friends though. In Britain, we have this weird thing where we also don't like to say certain things, but I definitely feel that we're way more upfront as well,、yeah. uh, maybe just with our mannerisms. I hear that and I'm thinking, wow, so when I go to Japan next month, 
<laughs> rougher. I'm going to feel like I can't say a word. I mean, is that, mm. did you get that feeling when you first went there? At first, I felt like everything was fine. But then when I started to get more deep into the culture and I started working there and I started seeing how people communicated with each other, I started to feel more like, <laughs> you know, conscious about what I was saying because I wanted to be accepted and be integrated into the society. So I tried to you know, mold myself a bit more like how they would act or how they would communicate. It's not always easy to do, I have to say. I got a glimpse of that feeling when I went to Japan last week. I was surprised to see how clean it was, how mindful people were of the, the environment, of the street, of literally everything. The level of respect is something I've never seen before. It's amazing, yeah. And in a way, it makes you want to be exactly, even more exactly. respectful and polite and mindful of your surroundings. And it's a very interesting feeling. It's such a contrast to like being in Europe uh, where we kind of want to stand out. We yeah, often exactly. encourage you want to wear clothes that stand out. Like if I'm listening to my music and I'm wearing gym clothes, like a vest on the, on the tube, I never would think about it. But I realized that after a few weeks in Japan and I'm listening to my music, I'm kind of like, you know, pumped up after the gym. And I looked around and like no one else kind of had that energy. And it was for the first time because everyone follows the rules in Japan. I then felt like I would like to follow them. Whereas in other countries where like this is kind of the rule, but no one actually cares or follows it, then you don't feel as uh, much like you want to do it. But the thing that stuck in my mind the most that really hit me was going to public parks and seeing like volunteers. Like these are not people yeah. employed just picking up rubbish like with a bag, just because they care about their country. It, it, it was incredible, um, uh, amazing experience for but sure. It's, it's the same with like soccer, right? I don't know if you guys watch soccer or not, but like uh, I've seen some like matches where it was like against Japan and with another country and you would see this, all these Japanese supporters like just cleaning the whole like stadium. <laughs> yeah, and that's it's, amazing. I yeah. mean, it's really something yeah. we should all learn from, you know. Yeah, you reminded me that when I went to Kyoto, I went to visit a temple and, you know, I had to, to go up a hill and it was uh, quite, a, quite a workout. <laughs> and uh, on the way up, I saw some volunteers, people who were cleaning, you know, the steps. And that was also very surprising to me because, you know, they're going all the way up and cleaning every single step on the way. You know, it's, uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. How about some of the biggest challenges that you face then? Biggest challenge for me was, I mean, the la the language, obviously, because it's, it is a lot of work, I'm not going to lie. But also, I do feel like sometimes my sociability was not that great. Because when you live in another country, you see a lot of people coming and going back. And it's so hard to make friends that are going to stay as well. And for me, I, I think that was the, the most difficult thing is I'm, ver I'm a very extrovert person, extrovert person. So I need to have these like social, you know, activities. And sometimes I didn't have that. And I feel like that was probably the hardest for me. But other than that, I had a really nice experience working there and studying the language. And also the um, government policies are really nice for like... Uh, you know, foreign people. I was surprised in Japan to see that there were so many uh, foreigners working at the convenience stores. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, it's very easy to find a part-time. I mean, I found my part-time job. I didn't speak any Japanese, mm -hmm. any Japanese, and they still hired me. So you, you mentioned the uh, challenges that you faced. So what would be the highlights? Japan definitely taught me hard work. It just taught me more like how to respect people more and how to think more in a collectivist way and not just think about yourself and what you want and all of that. I think that in France, we are kind of leaning towards a more individualist society. As you said, like being original and having your own thoughts is praised. You have to have this like kind of originality to yourself. But I do think to some extent it's good to think about other people and just think more as a community. If you could run it back and meet yourself 10 years ago, what would you tell yourself? Honestly, I wouldn't change anything and any mistakes that I that I made. And I think that 10 years before myself would be super happy and super proud of what I did because I just, I just tried and, you know, I just followed my dreams and I did it, you know. I, I went through stuff um, like everyone does, but 
at the same time, I didn't want to, you know, stay in France, start working in France, and then look at myself and be like, you're 30, and you didn't even, like, realize what you wanted to do, you know, and realize your dream. I didn't want to regret stuff. Inspirant, hein? <laughs> very inspiring. I think with that, we're going to say thank you very much to Cami. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cami. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. Give us a subscribe if you like the content and uh, gain some value from it. And we hope to see you all very, very soon.